Bonham, the sort of uh, meta influence was always Bonham. And, and I think for me, mainly because of the combination of sound, feel, and originality, you know. Right, and that, that power and that feel, that swing that he had, right? Because he was yeah. so influenced by Buddy Rich and Gene Krupa. Those were his guys, right? Very much so, and Elvin Jones, too. Elvin Jones. I mean, if we start talking about Bonham's influences, there's a lot of them throughout the genres, but he, he certainly had a very great affinity for for all the great black drummers for yes, black music yes, yes, jazz yes. music rhythm and blues soul i mean when you start thinking about like guys like al jackson jr bernard purdy earl palmer is a legend of new orleans session work those are the, and all of those guys have something in common they grew well of course they they, they groove in incredibly hard and set the bar really for it but they all have that swing kind of sensibility so there's an interesting kind of lineage. My my dad heard that and felt it. Yep. And then I heard it and felt it because I was growing up hearing great jazz music. I was like, hey, wait, here's a rock drummer who really actually kind of swings. And and the, you know, Buddy Rich, um, Bonzo, I know he loved Buddy. and But there are things about Bonham's playing that I hear that come from Sonny Payne the great drummer with Count Basie's band, yes. the way he set the fills, okay. the, the sound of the drums. Yeah. I was very much obsessed with Bonham in particular, but with a few other drummers too, namely Pert, Ian Pace, Stuart Copeland, I loved a lot too. Um, but the guys with good chops and a good feel, right? And so I used to transcribe, but not write. I don't like calling it transcribing. It's basically, for me, it's always been by ear. I used to meticulously learn the parts on those records and play along with them. Um, but I didn't really make the connections at that time, at least in a very cursory way I did. But I didn't really know that much about the history of drumming or John Bonham's history to know where he came from. Okay. So... After all these years of being a jazz musician and also getting a greater appreciation for soul and funk and R&B, which I wasn't as much into when I was in high school. You know, I grew up in a neighborhood where, you know, just, just be honest, people didn't listen to much soul and R&B. <laughs> so but when I got to high school, my horizon started to broaden and there's diversity at my school. I, grew, I went to a, a great school here in Chicago and um I started to get into different types of music. And then as an adult jazz musician, I started listening more and more to, you know, people like James Brown, listen to Michael Jackson. I mean, just listening to great R&B and soul music. And I started looking at those drummers and like, oh, Bernard Purdy, you know, wow, he, he could swing too. And he was influenced by so-and-so and Al Jackson Jr. influenced so-and-so and, you know, David Garibaldi was checking these guys out, and Mike Clark loved Clyde Stubblefield. And, you know, I didn't know all of that stuff in high school. But as an adult musician, I could put it all together and see that John Bonham, even though he was such an innovative drummer, and the first album really exemplifies how, how truly innovative and great he was, he didn't spring fully formed as that drummer. You know, he came from somewhere. So what I guess I'm taking a long roundabout way of saying this, but what I enjoy about doing this channel, even though it's just me in my basement banging out some Zeppelin covers and then occasionally talking about breaking them down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I really enjoy about it is getting the feedback from other people about it. You know, mostly it's positive. There's there's always some naysayers and that's OK. But mostly it's it's been the response has been positive and enthusiastic. There's something about his drumming. He's one of those artists that when he hits, you hear and feel the bass drum or the groove, it does something for you. It satisfies like an emotional need. So I see that in the responses from these people, you know, and they love it. And they're just like, man. And I'm not saying this at all in an egocentric way because I nowhere near. I would never consider myself anywhere near the talent, the raw talent and ability of John Bonham. But just the fact that I can play this stuff and it comes off sounding relatively OK, people are excited about it. And so it's, it's made me feel like I have 
even more of an appreciation now for his drumming and his contribution to music, not just the drumming. He was not only a consummate drummer, he was a consummate musician.